Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate you, Chairman, for being here today. I guess I'd like to drill down a little bit in terms of uh, once you've issued this new guidance and it's gone out to the banks, what are you doing to be able to repair that relationship actually with the customers? Well, we, you know, as you know, Congressman, our relationship is, is with the institute. But it was your actions that separated some businesses no, I agree, uh, from and the relationship with the banks. And that was, you know, the, frankly, that's the issue we're trying to address. I don't know that we can, uh, to the extent there was an impact in the past because of misunderstandings in regard uh, to what our policy was, that's something we regret and frankly acknowledge the failure if there was any consequence of that kind as a result of the list that was issued. I think our objective now going forward is to ensure that our policy is well understood and consistently implemented so that any business that's complying with applicable state and federal law should have access to a, a banking relationship and that the bank should be clear that there is no prohibition or discouragement in regard to that. And uh, two points, if an examiner uh, should ever raise a question or recommendation, uh, again, as I made clear, we've now established policies where uh, anything that's uh, directed has to be in writing. The legal and regulatory basis has to be provided. And it can't be simply on some reputational concern. And it cannot be informal. So we, we hope there's a sense of accountability here uh, so that the institution, so that it only occurs in appropriate circumstances. And, and that I, the institution is given clear notice. Think, you know, part, part of your mission, obviously, safety and soundness of our banks. Uh, Businesses have pretty much the same concern for their own safety and soundness, and arbitrarily, uh, you know, it's, it sounds like it was just a big mix-up, and gosh, we made a mistake, and uh, uh, we feel bad, and now we're going to try and correct it. But there is institutional damage, effectively, that you put into place. How are you going to address a bank? You have a list that you've now wiped away. Uh, that's like going before a jury and saying, after a testimony is being given, and saying, disregard that. You've heard it. Uh, are you going to see a potential problem in terms of those relationships going forward for fear uh, with maybe the threat of, of jail, uh, other penalties going on, the banks are simply not going to, to handle these uh, businesses as customers? Yeah, I, look, I, I hope that's not the case. We are making every effort, I, I should say, just to, be, to uh, be clear in terms of communicating to our examiners what the policy and expectation is. I met personally with all six of our regional directors, and as I indicated, I took part in a nationwide all-hands call for our examiners around the country to make clear both what our policy is and what the procedures are we expect them to follow. We have a very deep commitment to following through on this. I understand the concerns you raise. If a business is engaging in... Uh, are, do you feel this is being effective, your we, policies now? We, we, we announced the policy with the clarification of our policy a year ago, the procedures that I outlined were just announced in, in January. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I am I'm hopeful and committed that they're going to be effectively I, implemented. I guess, Chairman, the reason I raise this, uh, the FDIC uh, issued a financial institution letter in September of 2013, clarified for the employees and institutions the policy and the supervisory approach. That was followed up 10 months later in July of 2014 with a second letter restating the policy. Uh, according to the OGR committee's report during those eight months, FDIC examiners were discouraging banks from having relationships with short-term lenders. What's that tell, telling us in, in terms of effectiveness of policy? Are you going to have to keep revisiting this on a quarterly basis yeah, no, in terms I, of lining it out to your folks? I, I hope not, Congressman. And as you know, we received that report from the Oversight Committee, I believe, in December of last year. And uh, pursuant to that report, there is now an Inspector General review going on, both identifying the FDIC's conduct of its, of its policy and whether it was consistent with, with the law and regulation or not. And there were also specific individuals identified whose conduct is now under review by the Inspector General. So. You know, I am hopeful with these combined efforts, we'll be able to address this issue effectively, but I, I agree it's going to be an ongoing effort. Follow up on my colleague from Tennessee's question. Uh, is this going to be a slap on the hand, or are these employees going to look at termination? 
Well, uh, the inspector general is, is reviewing the conduct of, the, of these individuals. Uh, that, uh, the, when that report is submitted, it's ultimately going to be, re be reviewed by our board. And um, it's a review that will not be done unilaterally by me, but I will do it in conjunction with our two inside directors, Vice Chairman Tom Honig and Director uh, Jeremiah Norton. So the three of us will have the opportunity to, to review and make a judgment on the, on the facts found by the Inspector General and then presumably take action that's appropriate. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair now recognizes.